There is a deep web game that doesn't exist. A game crawling with viruses and illegal content flagged by the FBI. It is said to have caused serious mental health problems to those who play it. Some claim it's a sting operation by police. Others say it connects to a malicious satanic cult. And you might have even heard of it. Game and its notoriety aren't much of a secret, played by even the likes of PewDiePie. It's widely recognized as one of those societal enigmas that everyone talks about just because it was revoltingly edgy, not dissimilar to the video game Hatred or the anime Elfin Lead. Upon first seeing it, I was unamused. It was obviously trying so hard to be something when it was literally nothing but a muddy pool of annoying sound effects and ugly visuals. I wouldn't have even made this video if I hadn't realized that what they were playing was not the real game. Let me take you back. The year is 2015. Mainstream popularity of the deep web is still in its infancy, before morons like Stromedy are pretending to order potions from Silk Road. Deep web browsing was nothing new, but those unaware of its presence are now beginning to take notice. And in one quiet crevice of the internet, there hides a small YouTuber who began to take particular interest. He ran a channel known as Obscure Horror Corner, purveying a motley assortment of the uncanny, shall we say. And before we preview this, I'll state now that there is nothing to be scared of, because Mama will be right here with you. Peculiar, but not nefarious. I don't believe there's any sinful intent with the appraisal of horror games alone. But some people believe that he was up to something far beyond just this. On June 25th of 2015, after a year of uploading over 100 videos of silent walkthroughs and Japanese movie clips, Obscure Horror Corner decides to dip his toes into the darkest side of cyberspace. He claims to have downloaded an executable from a mysterious source on an Onion site, and installed it onto his system. He shared the link hosting the game with the public, but the link is, of course, dead. Thankfully, he recorded his findings and uploaded it to YouTube, calling it Sad Satan Deep Web Horror Game Part 1. The first sequence we hear a female child chanting in reverse. It leads back to the Swedish Rhapsody number station presumably used to transmit encrypted messages to authorized parties of foreign countries. They're most commonly used as a form of communication for undercover spies or The audio of this second sequence is a slowed down version of KMFDM's song, Lynch Mob. The band is often publicly connected with a solution album. Sleep, 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 sleep. 
The first video ends with a reversed and replaying clip of Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. When played backwards, this is what the new lyrics are supposed to be. It's been publicly documented that the guitarist of Led Zeppelin, Jimmy Page, was in a Rolf's relationship with a 14 year old girl known as Lori Maddox, who was his groupie for several years. Why am I telling you all of this? Ostensibly, this information is significant in understanding the objective of this sad Satan game, which we will get to. And that concludes part one. That's it? Because so far I have no reason to believe that the game itself poses any malevolent intent. No recruitment process, no criminal material, no hypnotic manipulations and no connections to an unknown entity. To me it looked like nothing more than an uninspired walking simulator with try-hard horror elements taking place in obnoxiously long hallways. Why is everyone making such a big deal about it? I'm gonna show you. There's five parts to Obscure Horror Corner's playthrough of Sad Satan. Most of it is more of the same, so I'm gonna skip through the hyper-analysis of microscopic details that don't lead anywhere, and condense the remaining material for you. Based on my findings, the message of Sad Satan focuses on child primarily the Hollywood Alfreda, routinely playing audio and flashing images throughout the game of famous celebrities who preyed on children. For example, this image of Jimmy Savile, a famous DJ, TV, and radio personality, ironically standing at the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children, who was discovered that he has almost 500 victims over four decades involving children as young as two years old. Same story throughout. Jimmy Page, who we've already discussed. Rolf Harris, an Australian children's show entertainer who did work with the Wiggles, convicted of 12 counts of indecent assault of minors. Roman Polanski, a French-Polish film director who fled the United States from a sweet bullshit case and still has allegations of child bullshit. Charles Manson, the infamous cult leader and criminal who had been married to a 15-year-old and justified the Tate rooms with the Hollywood and Alfred allegations. Satomo Miyazaki, the otaku murderer of four young girls. Along with this, there is only one type of NPC that can be found within the game. A little girl, who will scream at the player when approached. Screams have been confirmed to be fake, provided as stock by the engine of the game. But all of this does bind together the narrative for Sad Satan. Whether the message of this game is romanticizing or antagonizing this blush isn't clear. But let's go over the name Sad Satan. Obviously influenced by the reversed lyrics of Stairway to Heaven, but the popular theory for this exact name in particular, over anything else, is because the existence of this game makes even the devil himself sad at humanity. This is just speculation, but I think it fits. Especially with the game's allusions to and other infamous atrocities that man has wrought. Moving on, in between the third and fourth playthrough of Sad Satan, media caught wind of this series and international publications all around the globe released articles on Sad Satan, a game that no one had ever seen or heard. Kotaku even interviewed the owner of the obscure Horror Corner channel, a man named Jamie. Jamie stated that he was sent the link by a subscriber who told him to check out a creepy game on the deep web. 
and that during his playthrough, a file kept appearing on his computer that freaked him out so much, he eventually wiped his hard drive of the game. Allegedly, it was a text file that said something to him, but he can't quite describe what it said for what he gives as vague reasons. But it was enough to disturb him far beyond any of his previous encounters with horror content to send him into a panic. He could not share any proof, saying he has no screenshots, and I suppose an unwillingness to reinstall. Later that same day, he makes a reply to his Reddit post of Sad Satan on r slash creepy gaming. I would have kept going, but I stopped at one minute. Don't trust pictures from the deep web. And Jamie replies with, There's no psis or CP, if that's what you mean. To me, this stands out. He specifically mentions Earl and Chalby for gone of all the things to be. Well, we'll get to that shortly. One day after he uploads the fifth part of Sad Satan, a discovery is made. When users who tried to download the game from the link given by Obscure Horror Corner, they were met with a dead page. It didn't take long for people to figure out it was doctored. The link is dead on purpose. Dot onion links can only contain base 32 characters. That's the letters A to Z and the numbers 2 to 7. But the URL Jamie left contained a 9, an invalid character, meaning he never had any intent on sharing the game. It's not an uncommon hypothesis, but I believe Jamie, obscure horror corner, is the creator of Sad Satan. Or at least, this version of Sad Satan. Hi, children! I think you'll find here on YouTube there's no shortage of basic content made by fake people. I know you probably want something a bit more real, a bit more serious, a bit more deep. Senpai! And that's why I'm here, to make dark content for your deep mind. If you want to see these videos more often than once every few months, all you have to do is go to Patreon and give me a dollar. I would much appreciate it, guys. And I think you'll find it's a dollar well spent. Thank you, children. Now, back to sad Satan. Satan, 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 Satan. An anonymous post on 4chan's X board popped up, claiming to be the initial fan of Obscure Horror Corner, who held possession of the original Deep Web link. His post remarked that Jamie wasn't showing everyone the true Sad Satan game, that it's a watered-down clone. He then supplied the link to download the quote-unquote real version to see for yourself. He finished off his post with nothing more than a signature. Z.K. Curious 4chaners gather around like a flock of sheep and begin opening their download folders like a needle pair of legs, frothing at the mouth and dizzy with anticipation to see what lies behind this most recent cultural phenomenon. Little did they know of the pandemonium that was to ensue, like a cascade of asteroids raining down on the condemned. One 4chaner after the next began reporting issues left and right. Many were subject to computer crashes, others had their systems slowed down to a crawl, and some could not even boot up their computer after running the executable. I can only imagine the amount of sweat pouring onto the surface of the keyboards of those unwise enough to run it on their actual machine. Regardless of the process, everyone was unanimously met with an unholy amount of parasitic programs bricking even the most secure systems, but the worst was yet to come. In spite of the deliberate sinister intent of the Trojan, the game was intact and very real, but upon playing it, players witnessed the blood-curdling image of the title screen. It doesn't end there. Players who continue on have reported feelings of vertigo and nausea the longer they play, including some affirming they suffered panic attacks and existential crises for months after playing. Some will swear that the game is cursed and inflicts misfortune upon the player. I wouldn't say that much. It's not unusual what the players have experienced, 
given the grotesque depictions of this new version. Because in addition to the original images that flashed in the previous version, this one will also show truly horrifying images of her old and child Hefragon. I feel sympathy for those who misguidedly installed criminally punishable material onto their device, thinking they were just going to play a horror game. Since then, the community of the subreddit r slash sadsatan has patched together a clean version of this real copy, which is an alternative method for playing the game without activating the original executable, which replaces the illegal content with something more... <laughs> mundane. But this does start to bring up a lot of questions. Who are the victims in these photographs displayed in the game? Who's the disgusting little scum who made this abomination, and where can we find them? Which one of the games is the original, and which one is the clone? Why are there two completely different versions of what look to be the same game? Before we can answer any of these, let's try to establish who ZK is exactly. We know that he claims to be the source for Jamie's discovery of Sad Satan, but what else? On the Sad Satan subreddit, a user by the name of ScareBearZK implies that he is the mastermind behind Sad Satan. It is possible, as he made that Reddit account four full days before the anonymous 4chan link with the ZK signature was posted. If we dip into his YouTube account, we'll find a video made in 2013, almost two years before Obscure Horror Corner ever created his playthrough. A video called Sad Sad Satan. Strange, but nothing that directly relates to the game, and it is certainly possible that the name itself is just a coincidence. But what piques my interest the most is what happened to the man who runs this channel. If we look to his most recent video, we can identify his face, and that he credits himself as Gary Graves, a man from Lubbock, Texas. If we go back to Reddit, we can see ScareBearZK nonchalantly drops a mysterious message in r slash creepygaming. Country Road, 2100 Block, Fry Deck, 1401. The truth is stranger than fiction. If we extract Friday, December 14th, 2001 from the above message, and we feed it into a search engine, we come back with two notable events. A solar eclipse, and the tragic death of a high school student named Kelsey Cook. Kelsey Cook was in a drunk driving accident. She was the passenger in a vehicle of an intoxicated friend named Nicole Crump. This all happened in Lubbock, Texas. It turns out that Kelsey, Nicole, and Gary Graves were all born in 1985, and they all went to Shallow Water High School at the same time. None of us can be sure that any of this has to do with Sad Satan, but we do know that a man in Lubbock, Texas, named Gary Graves, whose face matches with the man in the Scare Bear ZK video, was caught with child Ephraim on his phone by his girlfriend Nicole Crump, and was federally charged with the possession of it in 2017. Sweet justice. Whether this Gary Graves is the same ZK that initially posted the 4chan link to Sad Satan isn't yet definitively proven. All of the evidence we have is circumstantial, and his conviction has no relation to his supposed involvement with Sad Satan. But I wouldn't be showing you any of this if I wasn't convinced that they got the guy. If Gary Graves isn't ZK, then that would be way too many coincidences for me to even comprehend. But as I said, I'm convinced, and I'm satisfied. But what happened to Jamie? On 
the same day as the anonymous post on 4chan, Jamie gives an updated statement to Kotaku in reference to the 4chan post as well as why his link was fake. And I quote the article. He now says he gave people the wrong link because the real one had, he claims, heroic pictures and child if we not along with the game. I didn't feel comfortable giving out a link for something like that. He did not share that link with me. Why does Jamie keep backtracking and changing his story? It's staining his credibility, and I'm getting sick of these lies. Humans only lie when they have something to hide. Let us begin by cross-referencing the behavior between Jamie and Gary Graves. They both have starkly similar versions of what seem to be the same game. The video game engine they used, known as Terror Engine, does not retain all the assets present in both versions of the game, meaning someone had to handcraft them. Both of them disappeared from the internet around the same time. They both have a notable affinity for the dark and terrifying, hence their channel names Scare Bear, Obscure Horror Corner, in tandem with the dark nature of their content. Scare Bear's last upload was in 2014. Funny, because that's also when Obscure Horror Corner first uploaded. Lastly, and very crucially, after some data analysis of the dirty version of the game, you'll find an output log with one very familiar name. At the end of the day, there is no conclusive proof for either side. Everyone I reach out to doesn't answer, and every lead has gone cold. All we have left are the games themselves. And if you ask me, they are nothing more than shallow attempts at repulsive and lazy storytelling. They're hallway walking simulators for Christ's sake, that look like they have 20 different Snapchat filters overlaid on top, occasionally flashing an unoriginal edgy photo. The clean version literally looks like it's being played for an E3 demo. Jamie takes a sweet time sluggishly traversing and analyzing every crevice. So yeah, he probably made it. And then the dirty version looked like it was made by a socially neglected and mentally ill man-child who's most likely serving time in prison. If they are the same person, or a group, or friends, or enemies, who cares? Sad Satan is shallow and boring. The only interesting part is the story behind it, which has been concluded at the disappearance of Obscure Horror Corner and ZK, and will stay that way until they may return. That's it. The end.